Hello and welcome to this PC Answers tutorial on using GIMP. Now in this tutorial we're going to be looking at some quick fixes for bad photographs. Now when I say bad photographs I don't mean really terrible photographs in this case, I just mean photographs that have common uh, errors in them and that you would like to correct. Now this photograph is typical of many we have here a, a beach scene at night, um, nice reflection of the moon. Unfortunately, um, the horizon is not straight. And you quite often find this um, when, you're, when you're taking a photograph. It's very difficult to get it exactly right. And sometimes if, if, you're, if there's a wide expanse of a, of a particular object or a thing, in this case the sea, which is flat, it, it becomes obvious that it's, that it's a bit crooked. So what we're going to do is fix that. Um, it's pretty easy to fix that. You may already have come across the um, transform tools in GIMP which allow you to rotate the image. So I could rotate it by eye to get it right. However, we're going to be uh, a little bit more scientific about it this time. Uh, this is a, a quick tip for you. If you use the measure tool and you just draw this line out with the measuring tool across where the horizon should be. And you get a readout at the bottom. Um, it, it actually measures the length as well. But what we're interested in is the angle. Uh, and here it says 1.17 degrees. So that's 1.17 degrees off the horizontal. So now, if we go to the Transform Tools Rotate, we know that it's 1.17 degrees that we want to rotate it by. In this case, it'll be minus because we're correcting for that angle. So now I click rotate. And now we have a perfectly flat horizon. Uh, one of the things that rotate tool does do though is um, because the image is rotated, uh, you get some transparent areas sneaking in. So you may want to recrop it. I suggest that you do and just make sure that you remove any of those transparent areas from the image. And there you go. Much better picture because it's flat. And that's a really quick and, and simple way to improve your photographs. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at correcting perspective. Now I've loaded up this image of a sign just as an example because it, it illustrates quite well the processes at work when you're correcting perspective in a photograph. And, and maybe it is a photograph of something that should be square or rectangular and doesn't look square or rectangular. Um, so this tutorial should be of use to you then as well. Now in this case we've got a picture of a sign which has been taken from below and which has resulted in the top edge being shorter than the bottom edge. Um, and obviously the sides aren't vertical either. So th this, could be, this could be anything. It could be a building, and I'll, I'll show you the same effects used on a, on a building later. But for the purposes of understanding what's going on, something square like this is, is a really good example. So the first thing we're going to do before we actually open the perspective tool is to drag down some guides. Now you see I just clicked on the on the ruler part around the border of the image there and dragged a line down and that's created a, a guide on the screen and I'll bring one in from the side for this side and another one in for that. The bottom one will have to be a guess but I'm sort of estimating it will end up like that. There are any guides that you don't have to stick to them. So now we have a rough shape of what the sign should actually look like. We can go to the Tools menu, Transform Tools, and the Perspective tool. And you'll see that this has opened up a little dialog, a window, for the Transform Matrix of the Perspective tool. You don't actually have to worry about that because there are four little handles in the corner of the screen and you drag those like this 
to adjust the image. Now you will find that when you drag one corner, I've, I've just positioned that on the corner of the yellow area of that sign, you'll see when I start dragging the other corner, the first corner moves a bit as well. So you do have to keep going back and adjusting things. And that's obviously a, a bump in the original sign, so there's not much we can do about that. You can drag the handles completely off the image area, so don't worry about that either. Let's see, I'm going to have to go back and adjust this one again. So as you can see, pulling the, pulling the corners out of the image is actually distorting the rest of the uh, distorting the rest of the picture but it's also going to give us a square sign at the end of the the end of the procedure like I say it can take a can take a bit of adjusting just to make sure everything gets in the right place so I'm just going around the corners in turn and adjusting them and mostly in the corners I'm moving them uh, left left to right just to get the square shape that we wanted okay well you can see I mean obviously the, the rest of the image is, uh, is rather distorted now but you can see the effect. I've, I've managed to recreate a rectangular sign. Uh, I'll just click on transform now. It, it doesn't take that long to do. I've managed to recreate a rectangular sign from something that was nowhere near rectangular to begin with. And if I just undo that action, you can see the difference that that's made to the to the image. So that that's an extreme example to show you how the effect works. Now let's try it in a in a real situation. I will open up another image. In this case, something that you're more likely to want to do, which is some buildings. Now this is a perfectly fine shot um, some buildings in New York in the in the snow um, but if you wanted a flat-on shot of those buildings we didn't want all the buildings to be converging all the lines to be converging to a point then you can flatten it out with the perspective tool and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag the guides in on two sides again and I'll have one at the bottom because I might be able to uh, slightly correct. I think there's a bit of a tilt on this picture as well. And if we go to Tools, Transform Tools, and Perspective again. Now, I've made this line at the bottom corner of this building. So all I have to do is drag it straight. And once again, nothing's ever completely easy because the bottom moves as well. But that can work to my advantage because I can adjust this bottom corner also to correct for the slight tilt of the image. Now, now that edge is more or less straight. Everything's leaning to the left. So I'll drag this corner. Now you see I put the other guide at the bottom of the that rather tall building. And if I drag this into the right place to line that up. Just this one again. Okay, and the bottom is now more or less level as well. 
So if I accept that, and now we have a much more flat on image of the, of the same scene. Now, one thing you do have to be aware of, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so you can see it better, is obviously when, when you distort images, the, the actual information for the image may no, no longer fill the original image area. So you can see this checkered pattern indicates that there's some uh, transparency there where the image used to be. So I'm just going to crop the image again, carefully to lose those bits of transparency. Okay, now another thing, when you, if I now zoom in a lot, well this one isn't, isn't so bad, but if you, if you have to distort images um, quite a lot, then you may find that there are pixelation effects in the actual picture when you zoom in. That's because sometimes you're actually stretching out an area of the image so it fills a lot more space than it did originally. In which case you may want to scale the image down so those effects aren't visible. Uh, it's up to you how much you want to scale it down by. It depends. In, in, a, in a case like this, I, I probably wouldn't scale it down at all.